Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Some of you may know that a couple months ago I was one of the instructors in the Photoshop Virtual Summit. I think it was the Photoshop Virtual Summit 5. One of the courses I taught in that summit was how to focus stack images. And in that course, I also taught something that I guess can be considered the opposite of focus stacking. That is, when we stack images so that we could purposely blur out part of the scene. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to do that in Photoshop as I did in the Photoshop Virtual Summit, but I'm going to start out in Lightroom and I'm going to show you how to edit the images in Lightroom, send them over to Photoshop to do that focus stacking where we're going to purposely blur out part of the image and then return to Lightroom so we could finish up our processing. Now you're probably wondering, why would you even want to do that? Well, most often you do this if you encounter a waterfall and you do not have a tripod or an ND filter with you. Of course, with a tripod and ND filter, you're able to get a very long exposure and that long exposure will blur the water that is rushing over the waterfall. So what you can do is if you do encounter a waterfall and you do not have a tripod or an ND filter, put your camera on continuous high speed so that when you press the shutter in, you're firing off a number of images one after the other. Then, frame up the scene and try to stand as still as possible and fire off around 10 images. Now, you can see I did that here with this waterfall. So, I'll just page through it and you can see how the water is changing. And the rest of the image is moving slightly. I did hand hold this, but I was able to stand relatively still. You can see it's moving a bit. And I have 10 images. And what I've done is in Lightroom, I've already did my Lightroom processing. So what I did is I clicked on the first one, I held the shift key in and clicked on the last one. So all 10 are selected in the film strip. Then over on the right hand panel, I put this auto sync switch on. So any adjustment I did to one would be done to all of them simultaneously. Then what I did is I just did some basic editing. I did highlight shadows, whites, blacks, I added some texture and clarity. I increased exposure slightly and then I went to the color mixer and I enhanced the fall colors and that's all I did. That's all I've done to the image. I did uh, lens corrections are clicked as well, but that out of the box is clicked. So I have editing done in Lightroom. Now I need to do this stack so that I could blur the waterfall. Now, to do that, if you don't have them all selected in the film strip already, do so. Again, click on the first one, hold in the shift key, click on the last one, so they're all selected. Then right-click on any of them. Then go up to Edit In, and then go over to the bottom, Open as Layers in Photoshop. When you choose that, it will open all 10 of them, but they'll be stacked one on top of the other uh, in Photoshop. So we'll do that. And it will take a moment to do that. Now, while it's doing that, I want to mention very quickly that if you go to my website, anthonymorganti.com, and I'll have that listed in the description below this video, you could get a free Lightroom Classic keyboard shortcut PDF that you could download from my website and print at home. Also, if you use On One or Luminar Neo, that's On One Photo Raw 2024, or Luminar Neo or Luminar AI, I have keyboard shortcuts for free on my website as well. You also might be interested in the course I have on Lightroom Classic. I currently have it on sale for $79. In the description below this video, I'll have a discount code so you can save another $10 and get it for $69. I'll have that going on through the end of the year. Um, this course has over 60 videos on Lightroom Classic. There's PDF outlines for each of the videos and you'll get all the files I use in the video so that you could work along at home. It is a complete course on Lightroom Classic, the most complete course available on the market. Also, I have some Lightroom presets, some Lightroom profiles. If you use On One Photo Raw 2024, I have some presets for On One Photo Raw, and I have 3D LUTs. 3D LUTs do not work in Lightroom, but they do work in Photoshop and they work in On One Photo Raw 2024 and Luminar Neo. They also work in Luminar AI. Now that's that. Now let's go over and take a look at Photoshop and see if we have all the images stacked. And we do. You can see they're all stacked over here on the right hand side. 
What we need to do, because this was, was handheld, is we need to align them. To do that, click on the top one in the stack, hold in the shift key and click on the last one in the stack so they're all selected, then go up to edit and then down to auto align layers. Choose the auto projection and if you did editing in Lightroom like I did, you do not have to click vignette removal or geometric distortion because I already did the lens corrections in Lightroom. If you didn't do the lens corrections in Lightroom, then click those two checkboxes and then click OK. Now what it will do is it will align the images and when it aligns the images, there probably be some blank pixels around the outside. Uh, that's unavoidable because it was handheld and you know, because of that, let me zoom out a little bit. Fit to screen, yeah, it's kind of acting weird, but you can see these blank pixels around the outside, all right? So we have it aligned. Now comes the part where we're going to blur the water. To do that, again, you need all of them selected in the layers panel. So they're still all selected over here. If not, again, click on the first one, hold the shift key down, click on the last one. So they're all selected. Then go up to layer and then go down to smart objects and then convert to smart object. Just do that and it will just take a second. And what you'll see is all the layers will be collapsed down into a single smart layer or smart object. And you could tell it's a smart object because it has this little square in the corner. Now we're going to actually blur the water. To do that, again, go up to layer and again, go down to smart objects, then go over and down to stack mode. And you'll see there's a number of different stack modes here. One of two will work. Um, well, there's two that will work and sometimes one of the two will work better than the other. The two that will work is mean or are mean and median. Let's try mean. So when you click on that, it's going to take a second. And what it will do is anything that was moving between all the different images will be blurred out or blended together. Anything that was still will just stay still and won't get blended at all. And you could see how it blurred the water. Now that was mean. Let's try median. Again, we're going to go up to layer. We're going to go to smart objects. We're going to go to stack mode, and then we'll go down to median. You could try some of the other ones, but it's been my experience that one of these two almost always or always works best. So there is median. Um, let's just stay with that. Now, if you did uh, go to the Photoshop Virtual Summit and you saw my class there, at this point, I edited the image in Adobe Camera Raw so that I could make that waterfall look even more blurred. Well, we have Lightroom, so we don't have to do that. In this video, since we're using this as a Lightroom plugin, we'll do that editing in Lightroom. So I'm done here. So what I'll do is I'll just, what I typically do is I'll go up to File and I'll just click Save. Now it takes a while to save and you'll notice in the left hand corner, lower left hand corner, it says saving 99%. It will sit on 99% quite a while. Uh, just have to wait it out. So I'm going to go to uh, Photoshop, quit Photoshop, and it won't quit until it's totally saved. And it does, it just takes a while. I'm not sure why, but it just does. So we'll just wait it out. Okay, we're back in Photoshop. You can see it's down in the film strip, although it hasn't rendered the actual film strip image. If I click off it and click on it, it will be there. There you go. So there is uh, one of the 10 original images, and there is our blurred image. Now, we're still not done yet. We could make this a little better. What we need to do is get a mask, and we want to mask out just the running water. So to do that, we're going to open up masking, and we're going to mask it with a brush. And with the brush, I think I want feathering somewhere around 25 to 50. I'll leave it right at 25. I'll get a bit of a larger brush. And what I want to do is I just want to mask out the, the waterfall itself. You don't really have to be too precise with this, um, although I made a big mistake up at the top there. I'm even going to get some of these trees over there. If it looks funny, we always could remove or subtract from the mask later or even add if we need to add something to the mask. We could do that later as well. So we're going to come in here and just paint a mask on the entire waterfall. 
happened here. I made this kind of big mistake up here. And to do that, I'm going to get a minus brush by holding in the Alt key on my keyboard. It's the Option key or Alt key on a PC. It's an Option key on a Mac. And there we go. That looks pretty good. All right, so we have this kind of area masked. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Effects, and I'm going to take Texture down. I'm going to take Clarity down. See how we're blurring it even more. And you could try taking Dehaze down. Some people like to do that. I'm not going to on this. I don't like it. It kind of makes it glow, and I don't want to glow. But I, what, it, what I am going to do is I'm going to go to Tone, and I want to make it a little bit, like the white's a little even more uh, white, and the black's a little more black, so we're adding a little more contrast to it. And that is that. And we are done. Now you can see, even though I masked over these branches, it doesn't really affect those. I masked this water in here. It's really not a big deal. It looks fine. Um, so there is our blurred waterfall. And that's an alternative, again, is if you encounter a waterfall or running water or anything that you want blurred that is moving, but you do, you know, in real life, like the flowing water, but you do not have a tripod and ND filter with you, which would allow you to use a very long shutter speed. So what you could do again, fire off at least 10 images as I did, send them into Photoshop, do what I did there. And then when you come back, you could doctor it up a little bit and you'll have a blurred waterfall. That's it. Thank you. Everyone who watches my videos, I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.